A growing unity among African countries is evident as they seek to remove Western troops and dismantle military bases within their borders. For a long time, the West has employed various tactics to intimidate African leaders into accepting military bases. However, a recent development involving Russian President Vladimir Putin has brought about a new agreement with African nations. This agreement goes beyond merely training the armies of African countries to handle their security. It aims to foster complete independence, self-sufficiency, and freedom for African nations, as expressed by Prigozhin during his deployment to Africa. The implications of this deal between Russia and China are set to leave the Western world envious. The specifics of Putin's agreement with African countries will be unveiled in an upcoming video. But first, let's address the question of why African leaders permit Western troops and bases on the continent. African leaders often endorse foreign military presence in response to perceived or real terrorism threats. Extremist groups, insurgencies, and regional instability pose significant challenges to the security and stability of African nations. In the face of these threats, African governments find themselves lacking the necessary resources, capabilities, and expertise to effectively combat terrorism. However, it is crucial to recognize that the lack of capabilities in African countries is a deliberate result of actions taken by the Western world. Consequently, African leaders turn to Western countries for assistance, as they possess advanced military capabilities and intelligence-gathering technology. Although foreign military presence is initially portrayed as a collaborative effort to combat terrorism and enhance security, it serves broader geopolitical agendas for Western powers. By establishing military bases in Africa, Western powers can exert influence in the region, safeguard strategic interests, and counter the influence of rival powers. However, these partnerships also carry the risk of exploitation. Western countries provide military assistance without adequately empowering African nations to develop their counter-terrorism capabilities. While joint exercises, training programs, and intelligence sharing may occur, the dependency on external support perpetuates reliance and undermines sovereignty. The presence of Western troops and bases in Africa has significant implications for regional security and sovereignty. While it may contribute to enhanced security and stability by deterring terrorist threats and supporting counter-terrorism operations, it also presents risks and challenges. The presence of foreign troops trains relations with local communities and governments, raising concerns about sovereignty and autonomy. Moreover, Relying on external support hampers the development of indigenous capabilities to address security threats, perpetuating dependency and undermining sovereignty. To address these challenges, it is essential to prioritize capacity-building initiatives that empower African nations to develop their capabilities in addressing security threats. This aligns with Putin's objective in his new agreement. Imagine the possibilities if Africa possessed a united army capable of rapid deployment within African countries. Such an army would enhance regional security and serve as a powerful deterrent against threats. As African countries increasingly assert their independence and strive for self-sufficiency, the geopolitical landscape in the region is undergoing significant transformations. The outcome of Putin's agreement with African nations has the potential to reshape Africa's security dynamics and challenge the long-standing influence of Western powers. African countries are on the path to resolving their numerous challenges, thanks to a comprehensive strategy spearheaded by Russian President Vladimir Putin. In recent years, Putin has actively pursued closer diplomatic ties with African nations, signaling a notable shift in his foreign policy objectives. Central to this diplomatic outreach are significant agreements brokered by Putin, focusing on the training and strengthening of African military forces. The core objective of Putin's efforts is to foster the emergence of a self-reliant African military capable of effectively addressing persistent security threats while reducing dependence on foreign military presence. 
Putin envisions the development of resilient African armed forces that can swiftly and decisively respond to terrorist activities. By doing so, he aims to diminish Western influence in Africa, paving the way for independent collaborations with other global partners. Through pooling collective resources and expertise, these African armies aspire to combat terrorism effectively and restore peace to regions plagued by unrest. Putin's agreement with Africa primarily aims to establish a self-sufficient and formidable African military entity. The overarching goal is to empower African nations to take control of their security affairs, reinforcing Africa's sovereignty and decreasing reliance on external military support. This marks a significant departure from the traditional reliance on Western powers for security assistance. By consolidating African armies under a unified command structure, the continent can rapidly mobilize to address security threats. This coordinated approach enhances the effectiveness of counter-terrorism efforts and minimizes the risk of prolonged conflicts. Equipped with a robust and cohesive military force, African nations will be well prepared to swiftly eliminate terrorist elements and restore stability to affected regions. Moreover, Putin's commitment goes beyond military training. In contrast to the West, which often conditions weapon sales on compliance with its demands, Putin has chosen to provide weapons and equipment unconditionally. This approach ensures that African countries have access to the necessary resources to combat terrorism without being subjected to blackmail or undue pressure. Russia's Army Games fact sheet highlights a significant increase in the annual procurement of military equipment by foreign clients, including various African nations. Over time, Russia has cultivated positive relationships with several North African countries, particularly Algeria and Egypt. Brigadier General Mike Nicholas Sango, Zimbabwe's ambassador to the Russian Federation, has underscored the positive evolution of Russia's policy towards Zimbabwe. He emphasized the historical ties between the two nations, dating back to Russia's support during Zimbabwe's struggle for independence in 1980. Notably, discussions between the Russian Deputy Defense Minister and the Sudanese Defense Minister have revolved around enhancing security in Africa including a potential $1.5 billion deal for 50 Russian Mi-29 aircraft, with additional arms contracts worth approximately $500 million in the pipeline. The significance of Algeria, a major oil-rich nation, cannot be overlooked as it constitutes 3% of Russian arms exports. Algeria is actively considering the acquisition of various military assets, ranging from fighter jets to ships and ground weapons. These developments reflect Russia's growing engagement with African nations and its commitment to bolstering their security capabilities. Despite its historical connections with the former Soviet Union, Algeria continues to procure military equipment from Russia, with recent contracts encompassing a range of military assets. President Vladimir Putin has emphasized Russia's willingness to supply advanced weaponry globally, placing particular emphasis on Africa, Asia, and Latin America, while highlighting the superior qualities of Russian-made products compared to foreign competitors. Russia boasts an extensive array of weapons, including small arms, combat aircraft, and unmanned aerial vehicles, many of which possess exceptional tactical and technical characteristics. But how has this agreement been put into action? In a significant development, Russian troops have already been deployed to Burkina Faso with the mission of training the country's military forces. Consequently, Burkina Faso might become the first African nation to receive comprehensive training from Russian military officials, providing Africa and the West with a glimpse of the remarkable potential that a well-trained African military can achieve. This shift towards Russian support reflects Burkina Faso's reassessment of its security partnerships including long-standing ties with its former colonial power, France. During a plenary session of the Russia-Africa summit, Putin reaffirmed Russia's commitment to training military and law enforcement personnel from African countries at specialized educational institutions. Putin underscored the ongoing training initiatives, 
highlighting that military personnel from various African nations are currently undergoing instruction at Russia's Defense Ministry's higher educational institutions. The implementation of the deal is already underway, while the West is preoccupied with disseminating propaganda. Putin reiterated Russia's dedication to strengthening the defense capabilities of African countries through collaborative efforts in the military and military technical domains, citing agreements on military technical cooperation with over 40 African states. Furthermore, Putin acknowledged the active participation of African representatives in military technical forums and drills organized by Russia, where they gained valuable insights into advanced weapon systems and military equipment. Therefore, the agreement between Putin and Africa aims to facilitate the removal of Western troops, allowing African countries to independently choose their partners. Putin's confidence in this endeavor stems from the understanding that Russia is a more favorable partner for Africa compared to Europe or the United States. Surprisingly, South Africa has already commenced joint military training with Russia. Moreover, Nigeria and Russia have signed a robust military agreement aimed at enhancing bilateral cooperation. This agreement establishes a framework for Moscow to supply military equipment, provide training, and facilitate technology transfer to Nigeria, marking a significant milestone in the relationship between the two countries. Similarly, Burkina Faso has entered into a cooperation pact focused on countering terrorism, although the implementation of the agreement is pending. During the same period, Burundi signed a deal aimed at joint counter-terrorism troop training efforts. Meanwhile, Cameroon confirmed military and technical cooperation with Russia in April 2015, as announced by Cameroon's presidency. In August 2017, Niger and Nigeria forged agreements encompassing military expert meetings, education, and cooperation on peacekeeping, counterterrorism, and piracy initiatives. In October 2016, Rwanda made arrangements for the acquisition of weapons and military equipment, while Sierra Leone secured deals for the supply of weapons, military equipment, and technical assistance in August 2018. However, there have been attempts by the West to undermine this deal. Western media, particularly in the United States, has increasingly portrayed Russia's engagement in Africa as a threat to the continent's stability and security. This narrative oversimplifies the complexities of Russia's involvement and perpetuates misunderstandings about its true intentions. On the other hand, the presence of the United States military in Africa is often depicted as benevolent to promote peace and security. However, upon closer examination, concerns arise regarding sovereignty and long-term security implications associated with American presence in the region. The Western perception of Russia's presence in Africa as alarming is rooted in historical biases, geopolitical rivalries, and a limited understanding of Russia's objectives in the region. Since the Cold War era, Russia has been viewed through the lens of competition with the West, especially the United States. Through bilateral agreements with African nations, Russia aims to enhance regional security and stability by providing training and support to African armed forces, particularly in peacekeeping and counter-terrorism efforts. Moreover, Russia's engagement in Africa is guided by a commitment to respect African sovereignty and refrain from interfering in internal affairs, in contrast to the colonial legacies that continue to influence Western approaches to the continent. In reality, the presence of the United States military in Africa raises valid concerns about sovereignty and long-term security implications. Despite the U.S. portraying its presence as promoting peace, stability, and counter-terrorism efforts, the reality is more nuanced. The U.S. maintains a network of military bases and installations across the continent, often without explicit consent from host countries. These installations serve as hubs for intelligence gathering, surveillance, and drone operations, raising questions about sovereignty and the potential for unilateral military actions. Additionally, American military forces in Africa have been involved in controversial counter-terrorism operations, 
including drone strikes and special forces raids. Furthermore, the expansion of U.S. military infrastructure throughout Africa has sparked fears of neocolonialism, wherein African nations may become dependent on foreign powers for their security needs. As for whether Russia can offer a better alternative for Africa to address security challenges and achieve complete independence, opinions may differ. While Russia's approach emphasizes training and support rather than establishing military bases, it is essential to closely monitor Russia's actions in the region to assess its long-term intentions. The history of foreign military presence in Africa, including that of the United States, France, and other European countries, serves as a reminder to remain vigilant and ensure that African nations maintain control over their security affairs. Thank you for watching and until the next video, stay tuned.